Hello and welcome to Morris Park. I'm Clyde Morris. Today I wanted to show you some new plants that I've got in. I've been uh, wanting some of these plants for a very long time. A couple of these plants are uh, old ones that I used to have, but died out long ago. And I wanted to kind of get them back. And another one I have is a new plant that I do not have, and it's a new Euphorbia hybrid. And I'll show that to you that to you here in a minute. And all of these plants that I got today uh, came from Botanic Wonders uh, of the three I just told you that I told you about. And I have one other one that I bought while I was out today at Lowe's. And I'll show you that here in a second, along with kind of a uh, revised update on some plants I got uh, a little earlier. So let's take a look. This is one of the plants I've got. I used to have this many, many years ago that I got from California Cactus Center. But I saw this plant online. It was a real uh, good deal. It's a Machucana Madisonium. You see there? It came from Botanic Wonders of Vista, California. If you want to check them out online, uh, they got some really nice plants there. And I'm very happy with what I got. It was very timely. It came quickly. Actually, a day ahead of schedule. And this plant, there's a little brown tinge to it. It's not soft or anything, so I don't think it's an injury. It may be distress. I'm not sure. The plant otherwise looks very healthy. And... If I can catch it, see that little guy under there? That's a new offset that's going to grow out from it. And I've never known these to really offset, but apparently this one's going to do it. And it has some flower buds on there. You can see. Now, if they stay on there or not, that's a whole other thing. It might go through a shipping shock to where they just drop off. Hopefully they'll come through, because there's a couple of them there. And it looks like actually a couple of seeds right in the top. See that? Not quite sure if that could be them. Really nice plant. Really fat plant. You can see from the size of my hand. Very nice. Very happy with it. Let's go on to the next one. This is Lutenbergia principis. I had a huge one of these years ago, but I lost it because of uh, commercial soil, basically. We didn't have much to offer here for a long time as far as making soil mixes, so you're pretty, you're pretty much stuck with uh, commercial soil, peat moss. And these things really do not like peat moss because where they grow is mainly limestone. So, I put it in my cactus mixture. And maybe this time I can keep it. They get beautiful, huge yellow flowers. They're kind of from the Big Bend region. Uh, Texas, uh, southern Texas, northern Mexico. And these can get quite a bit larger. A really unusual cactus, uh, known as the agave cactus because of its similarities to agaves. As far as shape, they're not related in any way. And as you see, the aerials are right on the ends of these long tubercles. Pretty nice plant. Paid a little bit for this one. But I really, really wanted it. I could have gotten an even larger one, but it, it was very expensive. But yeah, Lutenbergia principis. Very nice plant. Actually, I was going to have an unboxing video for you guys, but my phone wasn't cooperating. <laughs> it goes into some finicky mode sometimes. So I kind of gave that up and just waited. Like I say, a very nice plant. They gave good tags with everything. Okay, on to the next one. Now this next plant here is a Euphorbia medusoid hybrid. I do not know the lines on this plant because it was just listed as medusoid hybrid. They had a number of them, actually, that were different ones. 
And I kept watching them for about a month, and most of them disappeared pretty quickly. So I jumped on this one here. It was only $15, too. It was really cheap. Had a special going on them. This one is known as Pot 9. <laughs> I know it's not very descriptive, but Pot 9. That's all I know of it. Very fat little arms and everything on it. I've got it really high up here in the greenhouse. You see everything down below. There's a hanging shelf here. But I want to keep this one up high because one thing I've learned about medusoids uh, in the Kaput Medusa group is they need lots of sun. I mean lots of it. You just can't give them enough sun, it seems like. And even though I've had them in very bright sunlight before, the, the uh, arms seem to really thread out. And so I found, with my Gorgonas especially, that the sunlight has really improved bringing it up high. And I'll show you that here in just a second. But this is a really cool euphorbia. I'm really glad to get it. Really awesome. Very fat little body on it. Really cool. And I'll show you about my Gorgonus and what I mean by that. Now this is my Euphorbia Gorgonus. It's one of the uh, Kaput Medusa group, Medusoid. And you can see all these branches down here, how they're very long. Much more like a Flanaganii. Now Flanaganii naturally kind of does this. They have thinner arms. Smaller one. These are both Flanaganii. But the Gorgonus, if you notice on the top now... Branches are quite fat. And that's because I've lifted it up more towards the ceiling of the greenhouse and it's getting more light. A lot more light. It gets the uh, more intense light of the greenhouse. So I'm going to keep that new Medusoid uh, hybrid up in the bright, bright sunlight, up in the heat. They seem to like it. And uh, I think it'll do a lot better and it'll keep its shape. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. This is uh, the euphorbia I showed you last week. And this is the euphorbia I got that was labeled euphorbia obesa. Now, if you look at them, of course, they are not a true obesa because they don't have that kind of silvery uh, color with the purple stripes. And look at all the offsets. Now, obesas will offset sometimes, but it's just not normal for them to throw that many offsets. So I figured this might be an obesa hybrid. Well, that's not true either. Um, I looked up some uh, hybrids online, just looking at hybrids to try to find this. They did have some listed that were just this. That said, obesa hybrid. But in truth, they were uh, not correct. These uh, euphorbias, I found out with some help of uh, friends on the internet and uh, viewers of my channel, from two viewers, especially uh, Daz of uh, Cactomania and uh, Mr. Alan Peck, one of my viewers, said that these euphorbias, they identified them for me. And I looked them up later and they are right. These euphorbias are Euphorbia and Fausta. Another one of the subglobos euphorbias from the Cape Province. Um, much like Obesas, um, kind of like Meloformis, Valida, Symmetrica. All those little round euphorbias, what they call the subglobos. And these also had another difference, and that's uh, the leftover uh, peduncles from the Cyathea are very long, and obesa isn't like that at all. But yeah, there it is. Euphorbia and Fausta. I finally got them ID'd. I just got to get a tag on them. <laughs> but anyhow, yeah. A new species for the greenhouse. Now, this is a plant I just picked up today at Lowe's. And this is an Echinopsis uh, Comanserius hybrid. In fact, let me see if I can get this uh, focused in here. I'm going to have to put this down and get a, a focus on this. <laughs> Okay. 
Echinopsis hybrid flambeau. So it looks a lot like Comanserius, but they're all classified under Echinopsis anymore. And it's full of flower buds. Look at them all. Now, actually, I got this plant on discount. It's a uh, new stock, but they've had it on the shelf a little bit. It has etiolated a tiny bit, which will fix that. Still has those flower buds, which I'm hoping will stay. But it had this blemish on it. And the, the lady in the garden center was extra, extra helpful in following me around and trying to help me find what I wanted to find. And uh, I was looking at it. She said, oh, oh, well, since that has a blemish on it, we can uh, discount that. So she put a little scribble through the mark there, and I showed it to the uh, people at the counter. And what would have cost us $6 just cost me $4. So really cool. And the only thing is, that just came to shipping, and this little plastic basket thing they got on here is what did that. It just raked across there while it was being shipped, and uh, so it left that little blemish, and that's not a big deal, because this thing can put out offsets all over it. The only thing i got to worry about is spider mites on these things. They really, really are spider mite magnets. The little beastie just love them. So what I'll probably do is put a systemic uh, insecticide in with this, what I repot it, and that way it'll protect it a little bit, because I really have a problem with keeping Camaeus away from spider mites. They're just voracious on them. So I'm going to put a little preventative in with it when I repot this. Pretty cool, huh? Now, pretty soon, I have a plant coming that I really want to show you. It's going to be a really spectacular plant. Very unusual uh, for the species. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's supposed to be coming next week sometime. So when I get to that, I'll let you know and uh, show it to you, and you'll see another awesome plant coming into the Morris Park greenhouse. Anyhow, this is Clyde Morris from Morris Park. Hope you enjoyed seeing these great new plants. And we'll be seeing you in about a week when the new uh, edition comes in. Thanks for watching and take care.